This is Pure Love, episode 12. Hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, Pure Love. Pure Love is um, the brainchild of myself and my daughter, Amanda. And um, a pl the platform of this uh, online talk show is to model and to share and to storytell the ways in which I raised her in a sex positive environment um, with all the successes and failures. Uh, and using that as a platform to uh, prevent, combat, interrupt child sexual abuse. Uh, this is episode 12, and today we're talking about fathers. The title is Fathers, Daddy Issues, and the Electra Complex. So much. <laughs> uh, and so we came up with this idea to talk about fathers today uh, because unfortunately, last month, uh, my father and her grandfather had a massive heart attack and passed away. He became an ancestor. And so this uh, episode is dedicated to my father and my daughter's grandfather, who essentially was like a dad to you, um, Jose Rivera, also known as Pepe. So this is for you, papi. All right, so we wanted to talk about the impact that or supposedly the impact that society says that men or fathers or lack thereof have um, with uh, their children or how we end up having relationships in the future. Um, so I thought this was really interesting. Um, uh, I know that you have different um, experiences than I did. I, I was one of those people that grew up with my father, my mother and my father. Uh, were together, married for over 50 years and together for about over 60 years. Um, and my father growing up, I remember that uh, I was close with my dad and I remember at one point as I was developing <laughs> uh, and when I was a little girl that back then, uh, he, he kind of stopped hugging me. And I remember that I got so sad about that because we were so huggy and touchy and for him it was almost it was showing respect for me and my body uh, I always remember my dad knocking on our door making sure he can come in and or you know understanding our privacy uh, and I remember that respect constantly with my dad and so that would that's that's a privilege that's a beautiful privilege and I'm glad that I had that with him uh, but I also remember as an adult <laughs> I have quote unquote dated my father over and over and over, <laughs> uh, seeking out um, people um, that back then I didn't realize, but had really kind of characteristics that my father had. Um, and I'll leave it there for now, but I want to know what your experience has been. Well, I have a very, uh, very long different journey than you. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't grow up in a two parent household, but um, I have essentially three fathers i guess three dads um so first is my grandfather um the second uh my biological father and then the third is a man who was in my life that i consider a dad um so my biological father wasn't around for x amount of reasons um we didn't start getting into contact until i was in my 20s um my dad He's a very flaky type of person, not really good with responsibilities, communication, things like that. So, you know, I've always known that he's been in the background, but, you know, like, I, it's like, I know you're there. You're like a guardian angel, kind of, <laughs> not really guarding, but I know you're around. And then I always have Poppy. So, like, to him, he's like a father to me. He's the one that's been constant, the one that's been there loving me, taking care of me, making sure that I was good, you know. Everyone in our neighborhood that I grew up in, they always say, your father, your father, your father, and they're talking about him. So, mm -hmm. you know, he's the one I consider my father more than anybody. 
um boppy was my first word so he's that's right <laughs> been super important to me before i even realized he was important to me <laughs> um so i have a very complicated relationship with father dad just even the terminology as mm -hmm. well as the relationships like saying the word dad or father doesn't feel right in my mouth like the only way that i would say that is by saying poppy and i would never ever call anybody else that ever mm. like that's only his name nobody else will ever be called poppy what do you think um do you think that relationship that you were talking about like um having your biological father who wasn't present your dad who off and on when you were younger you had more interaction with him when you were younger and then older that kind of fell away uh and then Bobby, the the constant figure um how do you think that affected how you see men or in relationships because i know you're pansexual so um not just men but you know how, how do you see men has that affected like trust or abandonment issues or anything like that definitely i remember the first time i even heard about abandonment issues was in middle school uh one of the school therapists or school counselors was saying that i think amanda has abandonment issues and i remember being like what mm -hmm. i didn't even like know what that meant i was like what but now like as an adult i'm like i guess i kind of do mm -hmm. like just i used to as a child i used to cry a lot about it i used to be very sad and like take it upon myself to feel bad like it was something that, that i did that i was unlovable like how could you not love me i'm your child like what's wrong with me why wouldn't you be here how could you raise my siblings and not raise me like so i had a lot of issues with that because with both my biological and my non-biological father i have siblings with both and they've all been raised with them and i've been the only one that hasn't lived with or been raised by my dad so i always felt some type of way about that like mm. that sucks that everyone else got to experience you and i didn't but then again as an adult once i built relationships with my siblings i found out that it was for the best so i was actually the only lucky one that i didn't live with either of them because i would have been miserable and probably would have been a completely different person um but i feel like I definitely have abandonment issues um, and it comes out in a lot of different ways in sometimes toxic bad ways where people who are unavailable like my dad emotionally or physically um, or that can't have a, a commitment to me per se mm -hmm. as their child or any type of relationship who can't communicate with me I usually end up finding these people as well um, people who are emotionally distant or disconnected um, they like my father have many different interests you know as in families because my siblings are not all from the same women so you know people I've dated have had wandering eyes as well um, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just like you know that that plays a lot into it I definitely do not trust men and i have a I, like i have this issue where where i'm attracted to men but i like hate men at the same time and not like not individual men but i guess men as a a race just manliness <laughs> in this society i hate and i just i hate that so many children are left to the wayside because you know the way that we are like the way we're taught in this society in this country is that that men aren't really they don't get the the intense like drilling about the responsibility of being a parent like women do or like femmes or female mm -hmm. embodied people yeah because i'm like for us it's always like this is a big deal you're gonna get pregnant you 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 it's never like telling a boy like oh you know if you get her pregnant you know that's the both of you you have to deal with that that's your kid that's your responsibility and you need to be on top of that and a lot of guys just let that fall to the side and they don't see how important it is mm -hmm. for you to be like present in your child's life i don't think it necessarily has to do with you being a man per se but i just feel like it's about being a present parent mm -hmm. and just you know just it's why have one teacher when you can have two you know mm -hmm. like you learn more you'll be a more well-rounded person and you guys have completely different experiences in life and i can learn different things from you so i'm like there's so many more benefits than just having a male entity in your house you know and 
although, you know, I didn't want or need for anything, of course, you know, as a kid, I'm just like, you know, yeah. I want my dad, but then as I got older, I was like, yeah, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. it's done now, I cried my tears already, I think after I turned 18, 19, I finally was just like, whatever, mm-hmm. do I'm you done. Think, do you think that um, some of those tears or anger about it was in regards to, like, um, what society was saying that you needed to have them, or... Or because basically it was his responsibility and it had nothing to do... Like, I'm thinking about heteronormative uh, ideas of, you know... um, I think that's it, too. Like, Like, I guess seeing, like, a lot of two-parent households or, like, people having relationships with their dads, it made me really, really sad. Mm. And I'm just like, why can't I have that? Like, even with cousins, like, besides, like... I mean, but even Christina, Katija, and Chris, they had Poppy. You know, Mm. like, he raised them. So I'm like, out of... I think majority of my cousins, I think I'm the only one that was really, like, not raised with their dad around. Or a dad figure that was, like, constant. Mm. So I'm just like, I don't know, I always, it was, a, like, an envious cry. It was an angry cry. It was a, I'm, a, a low self-esteem cry. Because I'm like, there's something wrong with me that he wouldn't want to be here. Like, I didn't understand that. It didn't click yeah. for me. But... As an adult, I realized that, you know, that happened for a reason. Mm-hmm. I'm way better off. And I'm glad that it didn't take me 27 years of bullshit to be like, oh, my God, I want to get away from you. Mm-hmm. It took 27 years to be like, I was way better off without you. And I'm glad that I didn't have to deal with that. Mm-hmm. But I know with Poppy in particular, he's a very quiet into himself person. And I get a lot of qualities from him, too. Like, I noticed that about myself. I'm mm-hmm. like... He, he basically is my father because I have, like, I'm just like him and I'm just like mommy too in a lot of ways. And I find myself, I guess, trying to find guys who are loyal like him. Mm, yeah, Papi was loyal, that's for sure. He, like, I mean, 60-something years you've been with the same person. Mm-hmm. And I, like, in my, in my life, I've never even had an inkling of an idea that he even considered another woman. Mm-hmm. Like, But it's funny because I... I th- uh, at his eulogy, um, I spoke about his dedication to my mother uh, and how, yeah, it was like my father was created and my mother was created and, you know, like he, I don't think he could have ever been with any other woman. No. Um, and at the same time, it's interesting that I see that love and acknowledge it. Uh, and uh, I, um, I'm i polyamorous. So for me, um, that, uh, it was beautiful, but it was a part of a different spectrum, a part of part of a larger spectrum I should say in terms of love and I um, not that I don't understand it but it's just like amazing to me (laughs) to um, be in love one person for the rest of your life and I you know I like again it's not me but I honor that I definitely honor it and it worked for them it completely worked for them Um, somewhat yeah (laughs) you know every 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 relationship is difficult and people have to struggle and I, I often say my father was a complicated man. It, it, he was simple, perfect. simple uh, but complicated. Yes, uh, but you know, one thing was for sure: he loved his family and he loved his wife, and um, and yeah, and he was a good man. <laughs> he was he a was. good man with with, uh, with demons, but a good man, yeah. a very good man. Um, I, I've said before, like uh, that, I dated a lot of people that reminded me of my father and I didn't know it at the time and afterwards when I was like examining the things and it was interesting because it was dating my, the the bad parts of uh, the things that I didn't like uh, and I th- sometimes think uh, it's because of us wanting to change it you know it's like we don't have an opportunity to change that so we find that person consciously find these things so that I'm gonna make this right I'm gonna change it and it'll be okay yeah and when I figured out what I was doing I was like I can't change anyone uh, it's not my place to do that uh, people have their own journey and they get to do what they need to do um, and then you know I, I was more intentional about how I was seeking people or you know just like falling into these like cycles uh, and stuff so i'm glad that i noticed it and then i stopped it um and then i think sometimes people date you know their fathers and it's a good thing because they're finding all the beautiful qualities of this person who raised them who was there for them who protected them who loved them who showed them what to look for in a person like you see these good qualities because they're teaching you that that's what you should be looking for 
Um, and I see a lot of good qualities in Poppy that I wish that I could see in guys in my generation because I, I don't know what's going on. I really don't. With uh, the 90s, early 90s kids, the late 90s, but you know, like 95, no, not even 95, like 93, mm -hmm. 1990 to 93, I don't know what's going on with us. So I don't know. I just like, I feel like I strive to find someone who would who would want like who would willingly want to be faithful to me and only me for that long or even consider it you know because you identify as monogamous yes All right, so that's that's like finding the person is important to you and that loyalty and long longevity and i think that goes into the whole dad thing too because i'm just like i've had fathers who who've loved many you know at the at the same time technically so i'm just like well, while you were out loving everyone else, you weren't really loving me. Mm. So I need someone to just love me. Right, right. right. And not everybody else. Because I mean, you know, I don't knock it, you know. If that falls to your boat, then that's you, you know. Right. That's your business. But for me personally, I guess that it's like deeply ingrained with that abandonment mm. and just needing you to myself. But not in a like... Right, right. Because I'm always like, leave me alone. But, you know, <laughs> like I still want to know, like, go in the other room, but just let me know you still love me. Right, right. Do you, so let me ask you this. Do you think... In, in me raising you and the way we navigated um, your biological or your biological father, your dad not being there, what could I have done differently to, I don't know, better understand, better empathize, or, or, or just support you um, in that way? Do you think anything could have been different? No. Because, I mean, like... Whenever I asked about them, you know, you you looked up, you looked them up for me to find them so I can see them. Mm -hmm. You know, you made the connections. You didn't trash talk them. Like, you weren't like, he's a piece of shit. And that's why he's not around. And he's off with this other woman. And that's why he's not here. You know, like, mm -hmm. I feel bad for kids who have mothers who are so bitter against their, like, the other parent of the child that they make, they... Uh, they involve the children in their issues I hate that mm -hmm. and I'm really really glad that you didn't do that for me because I know a lot of parents are just like your father ain't shit mm -hmm. and that's why he's not here and it's and tough yeah it's tough not to do that you know um but especially because you know his true character and I don't know and you're just like I want you to know so you know like to mm -hmm. prevent that but it's like I had to figure it out on my own because mm -hmm. it's like you know he's still at the end of the day you know he's still my dad and regardless of what happened you know I still have sometimes well before i had the, the the need and the right you know to try to build a relationship with him mm -hmm. but now i'm just like it is what it is you know how are you stuff like that but wow. the only true father i guess is an ancestor now well, I am a true believer that we can create the families that we want, um, that uh, two-parent households don't have to be the case. It could be a village of people that love and care for the child or children or people in it. Um, and, and of course, I believe in um, any kind of family structure that people want to create for themselves that's really healthy and good. Um, and of course, more people loving on a child is always a good thing. <laughs> I, I personally just don't like the demonization of like um, independent solo or you know parents. Um, it is it, it is hard because this world makes it hard. Um, but I, I I feel like when I was raising you, I was like trying to embody that um, it, even though they're not there, we can make this you know we're a team it's you and me against the world i definitely felt that so mm -hmm. that's why after a while i was like i don't even know why i'm tripping <laughs> but i mean i could understand that because we don't you don't live in a vacuum right you like the whole world is around you and the whole world is saying you need you know, a dad you, you need, need a, a dad mom. and a mom you know, and then me look at me weirdo like so <laughs> <laughs> you know, we screwed that all up but <laughs> It's okay. We had a nice weirdo family. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's all right. <laughs> um, but you know, yeah, I think that it's it's not it's not ludicrous that you're going through these feelings and thinking about that. Um, and interestingly enough, I was in a two parent household, and a lot of times I struggled <laughs> with that. I struggled with it because of my own ideas about compatibility and communication style and and things like that. But that was my own personal opinion and as an adult I get to craft the relationship structure that I think works for me um, without you know 
uh, mm -hmm. down, downing anybody else, right? Um, yeah. Okay. I think if I were trying to, like, I guess, date my father, I would only be referring to Poppy and the qualities that I saw in him as a provider, as a father. Um, and I felt like maybe, like, I mean, I would consciously seek out someone like Poppy in that respect. But subconsciously, I sought out my biological father and my dad and those terrible qualities in trying to, like, make them see that I was worthy enough for them to stay. Mm, mm, yeah. So Which, it, it's that, re it's like trying to fix it, trying to fix it. Yeah, because I'm like, about. we're too far gone. You're not going to change. So maybe I can make this other person see that I'm worthy and then I'll feel better and then it won't hurt so bad about you. Mm, mm. So I know, like, that was a big thing for me, too. And I'm just like, you remind me of my dad. Like, you're just an asshole. And I don't even know why I'm dealing with this. So now I'm in a different spot. But growing, you know, like, in the beginning, it was very, like, why do I keep meeting these people? Like, why won't anyone stay? And then it goes down that whole spiral of daddy issues. And if the the supposed, supposed to be number one man in my life couldn't stay, why would anyone else stay? So that was a, a huge cloud over my head, too. Um, with dating relationships or dealing with men in general. Do you still feel that way? Like, if, why, if he didn't stay, then why would anybody else want to stay? Kind of. Yeah? Yeah. So, but it, it's even the way you're talking about it now, it's like, I understand those feelings before, but even now, in, in retrospect, do, do you think that there's uh, room for shifting that, that idea because them leaving has absolutely nothing to do with who you are and your lovability and logically you know, or, yeah like, you right. know logically you know that but your heart and your brain are two different things so you're just like i can tell myself you know monsters aren't real there's nothing under my bed right, right but right. i'm still gonna sleep at a nightlight <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's not true but just an example i like the dark now but yeah so i'm just like if i were to you know I, can, I tell myself all the time, like, I know it wasn't me. No. I like, And I know the reasons why you weren't around. I know why you couldn't be a father to me. And I know it has absolutely nothing to do with me, but you still internalize it. Because mm. it's like, that's supposed to be one of the first, like, pure, right, right. unfiltered bond. You know, like, the, the bond with your mom and the bond with your father. Like, that family is supposed to be, like, you know, like, that feeling of security and mm. love. And I didn't ever felt that from them. Only, you know, from Poppy. Mm. So I'm just like... That was always a big, big, big issue. Mm. Huge. I hope I hope that you can at some point um, through work like shift it. And just like you said right now, now you realize that you weren't supposed to be. They weren't supposed to be in your life, and that you were lucky enough to have Papi. So like, I hope that one day you really and truly accept that you were the the man that was supposed to be in your presence. You know, was Papi. And we are suffering a great loss because he's no longer with us. No. But he is an ancestor, and we will continue to talk to him in mm -hmm. the other realm. Um, yeah, let's shift that to some positive ass shit because we did have Papi. I'm very, very grateful for that. Yeah. I'm thinking a lot about um, how this relates to like uh, prevention of child sexual abuse and some of the things that come up for me are in terms of um, this, you know, the seeking of daddy, you know, this um, a wanting attention and approval and, you know, harm doers that are grooming um, children uh, really look for uh, those at the margins, those who are sad, depressed. Um, and if um, or lacking a father figure mainly for safety reasons because they feel like if there's a man in the house they'll be more it'll be less it'll be harder for them to attack or abuse if there's another male around if the abuser is a male yeah. it could be that but also there are you know harm doers that don't care about that and they no matter if there's a male female mother father in the house but i'm thinking about how that could possibly be used uh, um, in terms of grooming or a hook uh, to uh, you know trust in someone that male figure let's say the the harm doer is male 
So this uh, male playing figure, on the... you know, playing on that um, that need and that want. Um, the idea that a harm doer could take this loss or this lack and use to it. manipulate, shame, isolate, use power over, coerce, to abuse. Harm doers look for like deficiencies, right? They look for these things that uh, society might see as defective or not socially accepted. So it's like being a fat kid, a kid with a disability, a kid that comes from a single parent household, a poor kid, the list goes on and on. There's nothing wrong per se with these identities or these people or these experiences, but oppression and rigid societal norms aid in the tools that shame, uh, making the shameful targets something we should be thinking about. So, uh, again, this uh, episode dedicated to my dad, Jose Pepe Rivera. We will speak his name every day. He will not be forgotten. We Rest love you. in peace. We love you, papi. Love you, papi.